quiet. Dr. Azini will return at 10 o'clock. If it is urgent, leave a message. You have 20 seconds to record your message. Start now. Clinic emergency call. It is now 9.55. The patient has had a relapse and is in critical condition. It's urgent that you return at once. What are you doing? Cleaning my gun, dear. Don't you want to practice today? We're not going to the villa. Is that so? Yes, Michele called. He said Paola wants to play golf. That makes sense. At least to me it does. They're engaged after all. They want to be alone with each other. It's not that. Michele is leaving for Milan this evening. And Paolo doesn't want him to see us before he goes, that's all. So what's up? We'll go out to the golf club. You're his oldest friend, and you'll have to convince him. Elena, I can't tell him how to live his life, and besides, the Milan Clinic's offering Michele 25% of the shares. Michele would never leave us just for money. It's something else. Or someone else, believe me. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not able to do anything, Elena. What right have I? You're my husband. That's right. I'm a husband with absolutely no money whatsoever and no say in the corporation. You know that better than anybody. Well, if you feel that way, then I'll take care of it. And I can assure you that Paolo won't win. I've been waiting for you for the past half hour. I fell asleep. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Just don't go back to sleep. Elena and Roberto are waiting. Oh, Michele, no. Look, I'm sorry. You'll have to use tact. Promise me you won't let them convince you. I promise. Now, please hurry, darling. Get yourself a drink. Listen, I'm a little bit worried. Last night, someone broke into my house. Did they take anything? They took the letter with the offer from the Milan Clinic and my reply, which only you knew about. That bothers me. Let's call a spade a spade, Michele. In this case, the word is ingratitude. Elena, my leaving creates no problems. Don't try to rationalize. You've attained a reputation which adds prestige to the clinic, and you know it. Let's be honest. I've been successful with two patients who are famous. I've become fashionable. I've been lucky. That's all. I'm not indispensable. Roberto could have handled both operations. Come on, luck has nothing to do with this. Look, try to understand me. An opportunity as big as this comes once in a lifetime. Listen, my father gave you your first opportunity, Michele. And don't you forget that. And I'm grateful. Naturally, I won't forget, but it's my future. I'm about to be married. At long last. We finally got to the root of the matter. Paul. You sure he's the one for you? Uh, Michele has everything any woman could want. Now, you know that's not a straight answer, Paola. It wasn't a straight question, either. Oh, look, Roberto, if we must break it off. Let's not have problems. What you really want to know is if I'm in love, isn't it? Uh-huh. I'll be frank with you. I've only fallen in love once. Things got completely beyond my control then. As a result, I suffered a great deal. And other people suffered, too. I don't want that to happen again. But after all, dear, that was a special case. Anyway, it's not going to happen with Michele. I'm very fond of him. If I didn't think I'd end up loving him, I wouldn't marry him. I can't be more sincere than that, can I? Does he know that? Yes. And it doesn't make any difference. 
He really loves me, you see. And he has faith. Dr. Carly! Your wife has fainted. I better go. I just heard about Mrs. Carly. How is she feeling now? Somewhat better. I'll tell you here soon. Feel better now? Yes, thank you. I'm sorry I ruined your day at the golf club. Senor Luis is here. We'll be right there. Oh, I'm glad he's come. You can tell him I've come to a decision now about your going. I offer you 28% of the shares of the clinic. Well, Elena, I've already more or less given my word. Given your word? For heaven's sake, how could you do that without talking it over with me? But we can talk about it later, dear. Right now, you need rest. But I want your answer. I'll think about it, Elena. I'm expected in Milan. I'd better be going. Would you mind leaving us alone to talk? Promise me you won't sign anything until we discuss it, Michaela. I at least deserve that. What time are you coming back tomorrow? Oh, I should say around 6 o'clock. All right, Michaela, I'll telephone you then. Fine with me. But far more important right now is the question of your health. Roberto's already told you all the particulars about this, I imagine. Yes, a sabi article stenosis. And if I'm not careful, I'll be dead before I'm 30. Now, don't be flippant about it, my dear. Seriously, Elena. We'll have to operate. Well, that's fine. Accept my offer, and you and Roberto can do the operation. And if I die, I'll leave my shares to Roberto. And you two will still be partners. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go to sleep now. Get some rest. She's hysterical, and she's making everyone feel bad. From the look on your face, I guess you already know. Yes, Paula told me about it. Oh, I'll take care of that, Maria. Michele, I have nothing against you. But I must object to Elena making the offer. I dare say that I can speak with some authority in the business affairs of hey, the clinic. Hey, fellas, can we keep it down? There's a clause in the contract that... I know, I know. But, but who can go against her in her present condition? Yes, but she'll get better. Michele, take the Milan Clinic's proposition and drop the subject. You'd be crazy not to. I gave my word to Elena. I'd talk to her before I made a decision. Well, I'll help you if I can, McKelly. I'll do my darndest to convince her, and uh, then tomorrow I'll call you at home before she does. It may at least help you to get yourself prepared a little bit. Uh, that's about all I can do. And you call him afterwards. All right, I will. But I hope when I make that call, she hasn't, she hasn't compromised you. I'll call you last. I'm also in the chess game. Or am I? Flight number 165 coming in from Milan will be one hour late today. You're welcome. Paula?
Hello, this is Dr. Lombardi. Dr. Curley has arrived. Thank you. Surgery. Dr. Carley has arrived. Prepare an operating room. Right away. Thank you. Hi. Hi there. This is the heart you're going to operate on. Anything new happened yesterday? I'm worried. I haven't heard from Michele. You mean he hasn't phoned? No. Isn't it strange? Well, don't worry about it. Something must have come up. He, uh, he probably met some beautiful girl. Uh, you think so? What were these doing in your pocket? What's that? Michele told me they were still on the other night. You mean stolen out of the office? From his office at home. Really? Well, are you sure they fell out of my pocket? Absolutely well, yes. sure? Well, it's a mystery to me. I don't know anything about it. It's not locked. Dr. Lombardi, the director would like to speak to Dr. Carly alone. Someone killed Michele. They shot him three times with a pistol. But who did it? They don't know yet. Why? Why? Oh. Yes? Dr. Carley, the patient is ready. I'll be right there. <gasps> Paola. Paula, you don't think. I swear I don't understand. Look, I'll have them relieve you. No. You must believe me. Yes, come in. This is Inspector Nardi of the Homicide Bureau. Dr. Paula Lombardi, Dr. Zina's fiancé, and Dr. Carley. Suspect anyone? May I speak to you alone? Yes. Excuse me, Inspector. I need her in surgery. It's 9 o'clock. She'll be there in five minutes. You can count on that. Like to tell me anything? No. You did want to. Change your mind. No doubt. Not much good insisting, is there? Dr. Lombardi, according to Dr. Rosini's diary, he was expecting you to call him at seven last night. Did you? I called him later. Why later? Don't worry. It's just a routine question. Well, because his plane was late. 
Did you call the airport from your home then? No. A person with nothing to hide would have said from the clinic or else I called from... A public telephone. Right. A phone call that we won't be able to check on. Always the same thing. I'm sorry, Doctor, but you'll have to excuse my nerves. You see, for the past five months, I've been off tobacco. Well, someday, maybe, I'll meet a doctor who says that smoking is good for you, that it builds up your heart and your lungs and your arteries. Right now, unfortunately, I'm afraid doctors make me nervous. And I'm stuck with this case. Besides all the snapshots, he took a lot of movies, too. There's a projector in there. Set up a projection. Right away. And hurry up with that. I need the tape recorder. Right, Inspector. <clears throat> the death occurred at... Yes, at precisely 10 past 7. His wristwatch broke when he fell to the floor. And you know who did it. You can talk, but... Felix. Yes, sir? Interrogate him. Huh? The bullets came from a 9mm Remington. Like this one. Three bullets fired point blank. Why? The way she holds the weapon shows intense emotional insecurity. This episode, The Swingers. <sighs> like to take her for a little boat ride? <laughs> Excuse me, madam. There's a man to see you. He says he's with the police. Show him in. He didn't wait to be asked. He's already in. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Carley. I'm Inspector Nardi of the Homicide Bureau. Please sit down. Uh, no, thanks. I'll try to be brief. Does your husband happen to own a Remington pistol? Yes. Would you mind showing it to me? Why do you want to see it? A doctor from your clinic has just been murdered. I'm investigating the case. Who? Dr. Rosini. Oh. Oh. What does my husband have to do with it? We don't know right this minute. Roberto. Oh, Roberto. Calm down, sweetheart. Maria, Mrs. Carley's medicine. I'm sorry, dear. 
I'm sorry. I just didn't know how to tell you. Oh, it's awful. That's why I didn't call you. My wife has a heart condition, and bad news is dangerous for her. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Is it absolutely necessary to question you? I'm afraid so. Let's have it, then. I know you own a Remington pistol. May I see it? Yes, of course. Got some idea where my pistol is? I haven't touched it. Have you had any visitors? Yes, there was a meeting with the administrator of the clinic, Dr. Lombardi and Dr. Azzini were here. Did you want me, Mr. Candy? Maria, have you seen the pistol that was in my desk drawer? No, I haven't seen it, sir. It's not important. That'll be all, thanks. Now, that meeting you had last Sunday, did anyone quarrel with anyone else, Doctor? No, no. Well, there were a few problems, but they were resolved. I understand that Dr. Rosini was going to leave you and go to a rival clinic. Yes, but he would have stayed here. My wife had made Dr. Rosini a better offer, Inspector. And I suppose you were happy about this? Yes, but actually my decision wouldn't have counted. I don't follow you. If you like, the administrator will show you a copy of our rules of incorporation. Right. Dr. Carley, did you call Dr. Rosini between 6 and 7 at his home? No, I had two operations that day. I started at 4.30 and finished up around 9 o'clock. Would you like a drink? No, thank you. I don't drink. And I don't smoke either. Mrs. Carley, did you call him? Yes, I called him at 6.30. He wasn't home, so I left a message. Do you mind answering one final question? Don't be alarmed. It's merely routine. What were you doing last Saturday between 6 and 8 p.m.? I was at a movie. It was boring, so I left. Did you phone from the cinema? No, from a public phone. Oh, I see. Inspector Nardi, I'd think that my wife's having made a better offer to Dr. Azzini would keep you from suspecting her. That's true. Excuse me. I wouldn't worry about the pistol. Someone who knew you could have bought one of the same make and caliber. Uh, sorry to have uh, disturbed you. I'll be off now. Thanks very much. This is all so strange. Roberto, I think... Hello? Hello? Who is it? Hello? Who is it? Hello? Roberto, Paola, Paola, oh. Elena, Robert, idiot, Inspector, that bird won't talk, I'm fed up. Dr. Azzini is in Milan, he will be back at six, if it is an urgent call, leave a recorded message, you have 20 seconds, 
start now. This is Luis. I'll come to see you personally. If you talk to Elena, don't tell her. Remember your promise. The only call made at this hour. The others knew the plane from Milan was coming in late. Yeah, but there's your proof that the administrator was here. According to Mrs. Carley, she called Dr. Rosini at 6.30. Her call's not on here. Well, she must have called him later. He got here around 7. And he turned the machine off. Have this tape checked out, Felix. I want to see if anything's been erased. What do I do with that stupid bird? If he won't talk, eat him. Well, a quail or a pigeon, maybe, but... <laughs> I called you yesterday, but Elena answered, and I hung up on her. I don't even know why. It's just that Michele's death and finding those stolen papers of his, well, I, I suppose I was upset, naturally. But even so, I don't suspect you. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. You have a visitor, sir, Inspector Nardi. Inspector Nardi? Yes. Tell him I'll be right there, will you? Yes, sir. Couldn't sleep last night. Not a wink. Roberto, did you drop those papers from your jacket or from your tunic pocket? Well, you were the one that said they dropped out of my tunic pocket. Yes. That means that someone must have put them in your pocket. Yes, but who? I don't know. You found your gun yet? I'm afraid not. Does that mean it's not in the house? That's right. You must suspect someone. Do you have any ideas? Oh, oh I don't know. I don't know. Roberto, I'll be frank. What Elena felt for Michele was more than simply friendship. Are you trying to say there was something between Elena and Michele? Don't be like that. Roberto, they both knew about us. You could never hide it. That's right. But I finally managed to be content with my place. Oh, let's forget about those days. What I'm trying to make you understand is that maybe for revenge, out of jealousy... Paola, are you telling me that Elena would commit murder? Hello, Dr. Carley. You're wanted in the council room. If you see Dr. Lombardi, you can bring her with you. I will. He will. She's with him now. According to this, you hold 20% of the stock and very broad administrative powers. Now, Mr. Luisi, on the night of the crime, you went to Dr. Rizzini's. No one answered the door, so you went back to the clinic, correct? That is correct. That evening, Dr. Carley did two operations. He finished the first one at 6.55 and began the second one at half past seven, according to the hospital records. Yes, that's right. I have the same problem. When I'm nervous, you can tell by my hands. Uh, did Dr. Carley leave at any time during the operations? Oh, except for the rest period he had between operations. Half an hour. And did he leave the clinic? I don't know. He normally rests in his office. Ah. Was Dr. Lombardi assisting during the second? No. She needed some rest. Oh, I see. She's very pretty. 
very competent professional. And at one time you intended to marry her. Who told you that? No one. But any man who comes into frequent contact with her must feel like marrying her. I know I would. Inspector Nardi here has some questions. Here's an insurance policy made out in Dr. Rosini's name. A hundred million lira. The beneficiary is Dr. Paolo Lombardi. But I knew nothing about this. I suppose he meant it as a wedding present. Well, I was constantly saying to him that we need some insurance, but I didn't know anything about this. It's not important, Dr. Lombardi. What were you doing on the night of the crime, between 6.30 and 7.30? I was shopping. Did you see anyone you knew? No. Not even when you went to Dr. Rosini's house? What do you mean by that? Well, you were engaged. It's only normal. Why shouldn't you visit him? Naturally. But I didn't go to his apartment. I resent your methods, Inspector. And so do I, Inspector. Well, I don't like yours. You tell everybody not to smoke and just look at you, puffing away. <laughs> Dr. Rosini's place, on the double. Right away, sir. Turn those damn things off. Yes, sir. Hurry up, will you? Hey, listen, Sophia. Does that train always pass at 6.30? Yes, it's a scheduled train. Thanks. All right, wake up. Well, come on, let's go. Uh, why don't I have it? I'm in a hurry, Felix. I'm going, I'm going. So you don't know how to drive. Let's go. agree with you. Green. Back in precisely 40 minutes. And Dr. Carley only had 30. All right, let's go. Name. 
Yes, I know. But by replacing Michele with Dr. D'Angelo, who is considered the best cardiologist in Europe, at least we'll uphold our professional reputation. When does he start with us? As soon as he comes back from the United States next week. Did you tell Roberto? Yes, I did. He's pretty displeased about the whole thing. There's still time to change your decision. As far as I'm concerned, Roberto's capable of holding down the job. He doesn't drink anymore, and his hands don't tremble. Happily, it's a closed chapter. But the reason behind Roberto's drinking remains with us. Let's not get personal about this, dear. I have to. Until we clear this all up, I'll never be able to give Roberto my full confidence. You really see it in that manner? I'm afraid so. D'Angelo will bring his assistance. And Paola won't be needed any longer. Then we'll see what happens. So even Dr. D'Angelo plays a part in your experiment. It's my first chance to have Roberto to myself. It's very important for him and for me. This tape has registered another call, all right, but it's been erased. Hmm. That would be Mrs. Carley's call. Probably compromised the killer somehow. But who erased it? The murderer. Hello. How are you? It's me, Roberto. Where are you calling from? Our favorite restaurant. I have to see you. It's impossible, Roberto. I have to go somewhere. I'll explain it tomorrow. Paula. Paula. What's so important? Inspector Nardi knows that at one time I wanted to marry you, Paula. But you don't anymore? Well, then. What would your answer be? Now that Mikhail is gone. How can you be so... You're still in love, aren't you? Mikhail and I were engaged. I didn't mean Mikhail. That poor fellow's been eliminated. What are you insinuating? It's quite easy to see, you know. What I'm saying is, you're still in love with Roberto. Go on. There are a lot of strange things about all this. For example, the insurance. Elena's life hanging by a thread. One shock. If she dies, Roberto inherits everything. But you know, I have plenty of power. And if necessary, I'll use it. I thought you were a friend of Roberto. Well, of course I am, but my own interests come first. Do you mind taking me home now? They're going back. I wonder what's going on between those two. You're upset about this whole thing, darling. Better take it easy. It'll calm you down. 
And tomorrow you're going to feel much better. Why don't you go away for a bit? You want to get rid of me? I thought you'd be pleased with the idea. Roberto, um, I've had to make decisions which seemed unfair to you. I want you to know they haven't been easy. I've tried to understand. I inherited the clinic from my father and... Sure, I know. You go to sleep. We didn't find anything, not even a fingerprint. Well, we did find one thing, a few traces of magnesium. Here's the breakdown. Four black... Now, what the hell does all that mean? It's the formula for talcum. Why don't you write down talcum powder, then? Why do you always have to complicate things? Don't we have enough complications already without all this gobbledygook? Why don't you just say the killer wore rubber gloves? That's all. It's impossible, that's all. That bird's keeping quiet. I tried everything. Listen, I, I even massaged his prostate. Nothing. Massage his prostate? Don't you know that's against the rules? So the balance for the first quarter can be considered quite satisfactory. Thanks to your excellent administration. You're really dedicated to the clinic, aren't you? With all my heart. I've been looking after it ever since it was begun by your father. He had complete confidence in me, and I hope that you have also, Elena. Of course. That's why I decided after your years of loyalty, you should have another 25% of the shares. <laughs> that is, if you still want them, Luis. Yes, of course I do. I offered them to Michele, you know, as a way of keeping him from leaving us. Yes, I know. What would you have done to prevent that? In all frankness, I would have advised him not to accept your offer. But that wasn't necessary. It's strange. That night, each of us had reasons of our own to speak with Michele. You, Paola, myself, and also Roberto. And Paola's the beneficiary of a hundred million insurance policy. Sorry, I thought Roberto had told you. Have you ever seen this woman before? Uh, yes, I think so. What apartment did she go to? I, I don't know. Lots of people come in and out. Well, thank you. Dr. Lombardi, what a surprise. What's so surprising about it? We need some data that Dr. Azzini was preparing. Sorry, but the technicians are still up there, and, uh, and I have orders not to let anybody in. Nothing is to be touched. I'll come back. Thank you.
Yes? That's my name. I'll come right away. They took her away from here in an ambulance, but she wanted to see you. When I first met your mistress, she was wearing surgical gloves, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yes. Sometimes she wears them to paint ceramics, or to cut flowers. May I see them? Yes, sir. Prepare for surgery. It's much worse than I thought. We should operate immediately, but she's my wife. I don't want to do it. There's no one better than you, and there's not a minute to lose. What happened? My wife was followed home by a man, and my wife thought that he wanted to kill her. He was one of ours. Was that absolutely necessary? You wanted protection, doctor. Yes, that's right. She'll feel better if you tell her. I want to speak to Mrs. Carley. No one's allowed to see you. Paula, will you leave us alone for a minute? I'm so frightened. Madam, the man who was following you was a police officer who was following you for your own protection. Just be calm. No one is going to harm you. My husband wants me to have open heart surgery. I have such a premonition about it. Please, don't let him operate on me. I want to speak to Mr. Luisi. I'll call him. Please, just be calm. I talked to her, and she's against her husband operating on her. Really? Why not? For her own reasons, I would think. It's fairly obvious. What is? According to the letters of incorporation, suppose Mrs. Carley should die during the operation, eh? Dr. Carley would inherit the clinic. It would be the perfect crime. She operates or she dies. It's as simple as that. Are you willing to take responsibility? No, I can't. But isn't there any other solution? None. In here. Don't let him operate, Louis. Please, I beg you. Calm down. I won't live through the operation, Lewis. I know it. I just know it. You mustn't be like this. You'll be all right. Have faith in God.
Just relax. You won't feel a thing. There. It's all over. Just count to ten. Whenever you're ready, Doctor. Pulse, normal. Blood pressure, normal. Breathing, normal. Calpus. Paula, I'm exhausted. You finish up. Doctor, do you recognize this? We found it at Dr. Rossini's. Were you aware of their relationship? You saved her life with the operation, but I'm afraid I'll have to arrest her just as soon as she's well enough. Inspector, this is hardly the time to talk about it. No, it isn't. It's difficult to do one's duty sometimes. I must say, I admire her. Paola? Yes? Don't let Inspector Nardi see her. They just found one of Elena's earrings in McKelly's apartment. Don't be frightened, Paula. It's me. I had to come. I need you. I knew you would. Oh, my God. 
I'll leave you now. But I'll think only of our next meeting. I will too. Till then. It's impossible. I was the last person to see her alive. You admit that an excessive dosage in the intravenous injection would have killed her? Yes. But I assure you, I gave her the right dosage. And I don't know why you brought me here. I'll tell you now. Because, Doctor, certain details and your and Dr. Carley's relationship tie you directly to the crime. Excuse me, sir. All right, Felix. I want the doctor to remain here until further orders. You don't have the right to do this. Come in. Oh, it's you again, Inspector. That's right, Doctor. I just wanted to tell you that Dr. Lombardi's under arrest. I don't think it'll take too long for her to confess. And what is the charge? Murdering Dr. Rizzini and murdering your wife. She'd be free to marry you and you'd be in charge of the clinic. Clear now? No. What proof is there? An excessive intravenous injection is an easy way to kill someone. You know that better than I, though. Yes, and I also know that a heart operation isn't a sure thing. Many things can happen in the post-operative period. Absolutely. But there are an awful lot of contradictions in her story. This is Dr. Carley. I have an urgent call for Inspector Nardi. You see? 
Policemen are under observation, too. Inspector Nardi speaking. Dr. Lombardi's taken an overdose of barbiturates. She's, she's dying. You imbeciles! You were supposed to watch her. I'll be right there. You were questioning her at Dr. Azzini's. Emergency room. Dr. Carly, I want an emergency ambulance. Completely equipped. Send at once to Dr. Azzini's. Double quick. Save one person's life, we're risking our own. when we get there. Exactly 12 minutes, like the day of the crime. Time to murder Dr. Rosini, erase his wife's phone call from the answering machine, and get back to the clinic. But there's something else, too. Inside your wife's glove, one simple, insignificant hair, which belongs to someone else. And it's exactly the same as one we found inside your gloves after the operation. You may be able to explain that. I doubt it. And you'll also have to explain what you were doing between 6 and 6.20 this morning when your wife was murdered. Your attempts to remove suspicion from yourself haven't worked, Doctor. Not even your brilliant operation on your wife. And now there will be questions you'll have to answer to the psychiatrist. Doctor, you are free now, and forgive me. <laughs> 